Ladies and gentlemen, what a great evening tonight. Masa her. Again. Masa her. Okay. Sahlan wa sahlan. I'm so grateful and honored to welcome you here tonight. And I thank you all for being here with us for the 12 Monkeys Award Show. After nearly one year of hard work, dedication, starting with um, 135 participants from three Arabic countries for this social companion school Middle East, it's now time to celebrate. Forget about LA, forget about the Oscars, forget about Will Smith, the real man in black. It's me. We're live in Amman, and it's now time to celebrate this award show, the 12 Monkeys Award, a long awaited event worldwide. In this special night, live from Amman, Ella, the European Leadership and Debate Academy, honors successful campaigns developed and rolled out by young influencers in an event that is now being live streamed at Facebook. What a wonderful evening tonight. My name is Sabine Abiad. And Sabine is not only a wonderful, powerful, energizing and inspiring oh. woman, she's also a media consultant, communication consultant, and she's the founder of She Dares by Sabine platform, um, a platform which tries to empower female leaders from the Middle East region. And it's my honor and Christoph's honor to be your co-hosts co tonight, Sabine. <laughs> Thank you so much, thank you so much, Chris. And I'm really glad to be here with you tonight and to be taking part uh, of this project. And now I think it's my turn to introduce uh, the two gentlemen, the two Chris uh, next to me. They came along from Germany here uh, for this event to participate uh, in Social, uh, Social Campaigning School uh, Part 4. And uh, these two gentlemen believe in the power of change and in building a new generation of responsible young leaders. Chris Stahl, a great believer in the power of digital social change and the CEO and founder of ELDA. And the other Chris, Chris Mus Power. Say it again. Mus Power. Yeah. Excellent. You become a journalist. I mean, shukran. Thank you. Politician, PR guru, and co founder of the 12 Monkeys. We would like to thank you also for generously founding uh, this award show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, outside on Facebook worldwide and here in Amman, please welcome our finalist campaigners. They come from three countries, from Palestine and Lebanon, from Gaza, from Beirut, from Nablus, from Bethlehem and Ramallah. And uh, a big, big, big acknowledgement and appreciation of their work, your dedication, and most of all, for them being real agents of change, of social change in the countries, the communities and societies. We could have done nothing at Elder Academy without them. They're all here. So give them a big applause. Thank you. Shukran. We are also very proud and thankful for the exclusive list of laudators who will be presenting the awards. And finally, a big thank you to the German Foreign Office for funding this project. And thanks as well to our partners, Factory X and She Dares by Sabine. And now, what do you think about learning more about ELDA and the amazing work they have been doing since 2014 in this video? We, the ELDA, the European Leadership and Debate Academy, do believe that our future rests on the art of democratic debate, civil engagement, and a new generation of responsible young leaders worldwide. Since 2014, we engage young talents from Southeastern Europe and the Middle East in an innovative learning experience. We strongly believe that we need to offer pluralistic toolkits and empower a new generation of responsible and active citizens. I'm a student of English literature at Bethlehem University. My name is Malak Bartadi. From Gaza, Palestine. The work of Elder is vitally important for democracy and civil society in countries in Eastern Europe, 
the Middle East and North Africa. Elders operating just where it is most needed. It supports young leaders to stand up for free and democratic order. And what's truly great about the trainers here is that they don't try to teach you how to do things, but they challenge your critical thinking and help you express yourself so that your ideas can be easily implemented. Ich unterstütze von ganzem Herzen dieses Projekt und hoffe, dass dieses Projekt ausgerechnet östlich der EU-Grenze noch viele Jahre mehr Unterschied machen kann. It is about networking and it is about how to become a real leader. Die Elder Academy und Christian Stahl befehlen die Teilnehmerinnen und Teilnehmer ihrer Seminare, sich für eine freiheitlich-demokratische Grundordnung und für pluralistische Gesellschaftsstrukturen einzusetzen. And Elder is a great opportunity to change the world. This is the best one, the best project I have ever been. So come in Elder, this is the great opportunity for you. <laughs> Actually, th this was an amazing video and to see the work of Elda for uh, more than eight years in more than ten countries uh, keep up doing the great work and uh, believing in the power of change of uh, young people. Thank you, Sabine. Now you have to tell us, Chris, what will happen in the next hour? In the next hour to all the people here in, in Amman and also worldwide in the metaverse, uh, um, you will never want to watch the Oscars again, or Emmy, or Grammy Awards. Um, you will see six wonderful social campaigns and we'll learn more about the founders of these campaigns. They're really great and I'm honored to have um, somehow supported all these campaigns. You will also be live when we announce the three winners, which I don't want to spoil anything, where it was a hard race. The jury was really working hard until the last moment. We also have an uh, uh, audience award as well, so everything will be live until the last moment, so you will be live there. And also learn a bit more about the work of Elder Academy, about our partners, and what we will do next in the Middle East, inshallah. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, Chris, I, I was wondering why 12 monkeys? Yani I got to know two people who found uh, 12 monkeys. Uh, where are the remaining 10? Well, they, they, they are supposed to come. <laughs> now, um, seriously, it's not about how many you are. Um, it's about how many you seem to be. And that's where campaigning comes in and, you know, all this PR stuff we are doing. Um, and so our lesson is that even if you are just two people, you can be an army of monkeys. That's it. Thank you so much, Chris. After 135 applications, Seven online seminars, workshops in Jordan, individual project work, trainings in digital storytelling, communication and content development skills. Ten Palestinians and Lebanese are now in the final, and let me tell you something, they have exceeded all expectations. They developed and launched their own campaigns. Six amazing campaigns were selected for the finals. Ombology, Mental, Read with Ninet, Brom Wachdom, Green Souls, Social Media Minimalism. And now a quick review of the campaigns in this video. During the last 10 months, we trained and empowered young activists from Lebanon, Jordan and Palestine in digital storytelling, communication and content development skills as they developed and launched their own campaigns. 135 applications were submitted to the program, seven online seminars and four days of workshops conducted in Jordan, and now 11 participants 
with their six campaigns, reached the final. Campaign 1 Brum Khudum by Lula and Leila Bashashi, the two Lebanese sisters, whose goal is to promote neighborly help by spreading information and positivity on social media, conducting lectures in schools, and attending street fairs and events. The ultimate goal is to increase volunteering acts and offer help while expecting nothing in return, driven by values like kindness, empathy, and integrity. Campaign 2 Ambulogy by Husni Sawalha from Nablus aimed first at spreading first aid knowledge. He and his team organized three first aid courses and are currently building a platform for medical advice about many cases like heart failure, diabetes, and others. Campaign 3 Read with Ninette is a platform created by Ninette Abiyatalla to foster and promote a culture of reading with the belief that reading is essential to create a better tomorrow, driven by the campaign slogan, I am the tomorrow, therefore I read. Different books were shared and discussed on Instagram and different topics tackled like leadership and building a habit to drive engagement as Ninette conducted live interviews on Instagram and an online webinar to promote the positive impact of reading on mental health. <music> Campaign 4 Social Media Minimalism by Madeleine Abuiraye aimed at promoting a healthy social media life and to raise awareness among youth about social media addiction. Many tips in cartoon design style were published to disseminate the main message. During a comic drawing workshop, the participants discovered their own style while experiencing a few hours without their phone. <music> Campaign 5 Men Datel by Lama Hatoum and Ola Zaiter tackled men's mental health awareness not only on social media, but took it to the TV and radio in Lebanon. The platform published many videos with 13 different men presenting the most common fears facing men in our current days in addition to tips for solving those issues. Campaign 6 Green Souls by Habiba Masood, Warda Ajour, Islam Masood, Ahmed Quraish, four medical students from Gaza Strip and West Bank. The campaign provides information about post traumatic stress disorders, offering vital tips on Instagram and Facebook. The team collaborated with the school to improve the treatment of traumatized students. The mental health of Palestinian children in war zones was the main drive of this campaign. The first question that comes to my mind, uh, what brought Elda to the Middle East region? The thing is that's a secret. I'm not <laughs> sure whether I am allowed to. Shall I really tell? OK. Yes. yes. <laughs> Please. The real reason which brought us here is a boxing camp in Berlin. OK, I was boxing. I'm an amateur boxer. I was boxing with a young female diplomat from the foreign ministry. It's no joke. It's true. And we were boxing together for a year or two and never, never talked about our jobs because it was a boxing session. And then she found out that we run Eld Academy. I found out that she is working for the foreign ministry. And then she became a diplomat in Ramallah. So she changed to Ramallah. Wow. And half a year later, it was the first year of pandemic. Uh, she asked me whether she knew about the project of Eld Academy in Central and Eastern Europe, whether we could do such a thing within two months in the Middle East. That was the start of 
Elder so Academy boxing. Middle East. Boxing, boxing is and behind. female leadership yeah. uh, in the foreign ministry of Germany. Yeah, brought us to the Middle East. And I'm well, uh, I'm very proud to be the, here. Other, other than boxing, yeah. what inspired you to create the social campaigning school for young uh, Middle Eastern leaders? It was always my dream and the dream of the founders of Elder Academy that we, that we um, uh, invite all young uh, activists, social activists, not only from Central and Eastern Europe, but also from the Mediterranean Sea. So all over Europe and uh, Arabic world, North Africa, to be because these are the, uh, the agents of change we need. These are the young, the next generation, they will drive the change. So that was the, the first thing, but when I met this wonderful, inspiring young people, the social activists, not only the finalists here, but all the others, they inspired me so much that I'm the most um, you know, honored person and I'm so rich because I learn every day by all these young people and activists from Middle East. Shukran to all of you. I'm so proud <laughs> to learn from you. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Talking about change, I'm gonna be addressing my second question for Chris about change. Do you see it coming in the Middle East or do you see it really slow in the region? Well, you know, change is coming anyway, if it's slow or not, um, you know, change sometimes is a snail, sometimes it's an arrow. Um, we have a saying in Germany, actually, um, a good things will take time. And um, I think to, to change social structures that were manifested over centuries, it takes a little time, of course, but any action counts and any person that works on it uh, will make a difference. And um, any fire starts with a spark. Yeah, that's, that's so true. <laughs> By the way, I forgot to mention that you have a great knowledge in the Middle East and maybe you worked like for 20 years uh, in the region with the German uh, Foreign Office. Thank you, Chris, uh, for your input. And we are all uh, hoping for change in the region. But let me ask you now, what's coming after uh, this, uh, this school, part four? What are uh, the plans of ELDA and uh, 12 monkeys? Well, that's more or less what, what comes after now, this, this social um, campaigning here. We need to ask, of course, uh, the nominees here today, uh, because they have um, to, uh, to carry the spark uh, to stay in the, <laughs> in the frame. Um, but I think um, we, we were happy to continue our work here, even with more people, with more projects, and um, with a broader reach over uh, the region. And actually, I don't tell a secret, I hope, that we are preparing uh, for next, uh, or for this autumn, to go to Lebanon. Wow, this is, wow. This is great news. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Elda. Thank you, 12 Monkeys. But we already mentioned the nominees today you have seen. We have six campaigns here. I reach all together over half a million people by social media in this region, which is tremendous, carried out by a few women and men. Um, not all of you, uh, them could be here tonight, but we have a couple of uh, them here tonight, and of course, I'd like to ask them, are you nervous? Yes. Yes. So, don't worry, we have a physician here. Oh. <laughs> um, Hosni, have you already prepared your, your victory spe spe speech? Mm. Sorry. We can know later. Okay, <laughs> later on. Okay, we are looking forward. Um, we are nervous too, of course. We don't know who won. We are not part of the jury. We have, like at the Oscars, we have closed envelopes, and we're going to start. We're with going to start, and we are all nervous too. We're going to start with the third prize of the 12th Monkeys Award. <laughs> now you could reach, give me the envelope. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the third prize, yes, I agree. <laughs> the third prize of the 12 Monkeys Award goes to 
the awareness campaign for first aid and medical advice with 20,000 reach on social media by... Hosni Sawarka. The campaigner will win 500 euros prize money. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And before we give the word to Christoph and Husni, the first winner of the Trot Vangers Award, we have an honor that we have a guest live here. Leonie Lawrence is great support of the Social Campaigning School Middle East. She's the first secretary and head of culture and press, press section of the embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany. In Amman, please give her a warm welcome, Miss Lawrence. Yeah, it's great uh, to be here tonight with all of you and finally meet you in person after having joined uh, virtually uh, at the seminar that you held a few months ago in Aqaba. Um, I already got a chance to uh, see uh, or discover some of the campaigns back then, but it's great to see how, how you have carried them uh, further. Um, and yeah, especially uh, since I'm here to uh, give some uh, words of um, praise to, to Husni, um, I would like to say that um, yeah, your campaign has, uh, has impressed me a lot. Um, you. With your initiative, um, you have reached a huge audience. Um, and uh, I heard that you also have uh, plans for the future to continue the, yeah, the excellent so. work. Um, I found it very interesting how you came up with the idea of your campaign. Um, um, I have heard that it was your mother that once uh, burned herself <laughs> um, on a hot I beverage <laughs> and, um, and that um, you then realized that she, uh, she used the wrong treatment yeah. to, uh, to take care of this burn using coffee beans mm -hmm. um, and being a medical student yourself you thought it's that there's, yeah, it, it's, it's wrong and there's probably a lot of false belief like, yeah. uh, like this that, that people um, have and, and, and used to um, yeah to deal with, uh, with injuries. Unfortunately. Yes. So um, I think this is definitely a campaign that we can all benefit from because I think my last first aid course um, <laughs> is also a few, has been a few years ago. So maybe I need a refresher from yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, yeah, um, I, um, <clears throat> I think um, yeah, during, during the social campaigning school, um, you have, uh, you have not only had uh, reach online, mm -hmm. um, but you have actually also done seminars in person. Um, and um, yeah, I hope that you can, um, you can continue this, this good work um, and, uh, and that you will be successful also in all the other projects that you, you have so coming much. up. Uh, thank, thank you, you so again. Much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. And thanks for having me. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, we already learned how you came up with the idea mm -hmm. for the campaign. How did your family react when you finally were uh, campaigning? So my family was proud of me because um, they, they, uh, they felt that I'm doing something right to the society and uh, to the people. Uh, and they were so, so supportive uh, to me. Uh, my dad uh, connected me to a lot of amazing people and organizations. My mom uh, always liking my posts, commenting on them, and uh, they were happy that I'm doing something good. Excellent. Um, thank you. Thank you. What, what are your plans now for the future? So uh, I'm, I hope that I can continue uh, in my work and expand it a little bit more. Um, and the days are coming, and we will see, I guess. Okay, I think I think you like to thank your mom and your dad. Yeah. Any anyone else particularly? Like, uh, hi mom, hi dad again. Uh, thank you so much for supporting me in this uh, program. Thank you, Elda. Uh, thank you, uh, my friends. Very very big thank you to them. Um, uh, all the people who helped me, like organizations, associations, student chapters in my university and other uh, regions. Uh, I'm so, so excited and gl uh, glad because I work with you and I hope I will continue this uh, in a bigger way and in a more, um, in a better way also. Thank you. We hope so too. Hosni, thank you very thank much. You so much. Thank, you. thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, brother. All right. So, this was already full of tension, but now I Emotions. think we should, full emotions, 
wonderful campaign. We told you it was a hard race for the jury. We don't know who, who won the second prize, but I think we should continue now yeah. with the winner number two, the second prize. Sabine. It's my turn now. Okay. With their campaign for neighborly help and volunteer work, two Lebanese sisters are not only successful on social media, they also spread their message with a booth at the Christmas market in Beirut and with lectures in school. And the prize goes to Bramachdom from Bramachdom! Lulwa is present here uh, with us uh, for the award and they will be winning 750 euros. Price money. Price yeah. money. Congratulations. And before Christoph is asking Lulua some questions, we have our honorary speaker, not live, but um, more or less live from Brussels, Sergei Lagodinsky. He's a member of Euro European Parliament. He's one of the early supporters and partners for Eld Academy. He's a member of the European Parliament in Brussels, where he's, among others, vice chairman of the legal committee, chairman of the EU-Turkey delegation, and substitute member of the internal and external committee. And now he's the honorary speaker for Bramotom. The second place of the 12th Mankes Award goes to two young women who have made a change for the better in many people's lives with their campaign. Of all the participants, they created the best call to action and a good linkage between social media and on the ground campaigning. The campaign is called Brom Wegdom. It was created by Leila and Lulua Bashashi and is an initiative to increase volunteering acts with a lot of inspiration positivity, and helpful and fun content. The two Lebanese sisters have experienced a hard time in their home country, but gathered the strength to react with positivity, volunteering at every opportunity they get, and finally, motivating others to make a habit to offer help and expect nothing in return. A very smart thing they did was after informing about the importance of neighborly help, they started with giving their audience small, do-able tasks, like leave a kind note for someone and help someone carry their groceries. That made it easy to participate for everyone. And at their live events, they made participating fun by creating all kinds of games. Thank you for this enjoyable campaign, for all your hard work and good energy, and most of all, for spreading kindness and hope in Lebanon. Honestly, who was the first one to, to have the idea? Was it you or your sister? Um, I cannot take credit, honestly, because um, being both a Scouts leader, we always think about volunteering. So uh, once we studied the community clearly and see what it's lacking, uh, which is obviously kindness and uh, positive vibes, we decided that uh, what's other than volunteering uh, and community service to help the people and help Lebanon in general. During the campaign, were there some hurdles to overcome? Which was the biggest um, thing that stood into your way? Uh, actually, people in Lebanon tend to misunderstand uh, the true definition of volunteering and community service and tend to um, associate it with being a scout or being a volunteer at an NGO, which actually they can uh, fulfill volunteering tasks that can bring positivity around on a personal level. And another thing is that um, the hard circumstances in Lebanon uh, are very saddening and people are losing hope, uh, but we are here to strengthen their feeling of belonging to the country and help them uh, if grow as leaders and the volunteers of the world. Outstanding, thank you. <clears throat> to you as well, the question who would like to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my sister for being an awesome <laughs> co-founder of Rom Dom 
and I would like the elder family. That's a lot of people I know. <laughs> and I would um, like to thank uh, my mom because uh, she was there in the behind the scenes of every single project, and she was our number one supporter from the very first beginning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, spreading kindness. So, the sound is nervous too, um, because we now come to the first prize of the 12 Monkeys Award, and Michael Geller has the envelope. Sabine, Christoph, are you as nervous as I am? Yes. Yeah. Can you feel the tension is. in the room? <laughs> we do. Ah, it's up. No. Yeah. I open it, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, she, I'm so nervous that I'm afraid to open it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the first prize of the 12 Monkeys Award in the man goes to two young women campaigning for men's mental health by encouraging them to talk about their problems and feelings. A video specially produced for the campaign was published online and in the Libanus media and was met with great interest. So the first prize goes to Ola Zaiter and Lama Hatoum for their campaign Mental. And before we give the word uh, to Lama, Ola is Unfortunately, couldn't come. She's in Lebanon, uh, but we have her in video to talk to two of you. We now have an um, honorary speaker for your campaign, and uh, the honorary speaker is Tilly Metz. Tilly Metz um, is a fighter for equality and social change. He's a member of the European Parliament, originally from Luxembourg, the chairwoman of the Delegation for Relations with the countries of Central America, president of the Parliamentary Intergroup for Animal Welfare, a member of the Committee on the Environment, Public Health and Food Safety, and now our honorary speaker for Mental 8 from Ola and Lama. Here is Tilly Metz. Congratulations to Lama Atum and Ola Zaila for their campaign, Men.Tell, because this is really the opportunity to men to have their space where they can express their feelings, but also their fears or just being themselves. You know that mental health has very often been a, a taboo, and especially when it comes to men, because here we have also to fight against this old-fashioned definition of masculinity that wants that men have to be fearless and not express their feelings. Here it is about just the contrary. Men should also have the possibility to express their feelings and to be their self. And this is also a win for their family, for their friends, so that they can be fathers, that they can be husbands. And these two ladies, they met at the Elder Social Campaigning uh, School. And the result on what they did with their campaign, Men that Tell, is just powerful. It's, uh, it's very touching. And, it, and I hope also it gives inspiration to a lot of others to uh, spread the same message that men have feeling and they have also the allowance to express those feelings, to make them even stronger and to have a more balanced life. So congratulations again for their work, for this excellent campaign to Lama Atum and Ola Zaila, two Lebanese women who did here a very great work. Top. Thank you very much. Lama, Tilly Metz already pointed out um, that you touched a taboo in your society. Was it, what, was, what was your experience? Was it more hostile? Did you, did you feel more supportive? Act? Was it both? After uh, starting our campaign, yeah. I mean. When we first started, a lot of people told us that men in our community will not uh, react well to what we're doing. So, so many people told us that uh, men in our community will not uh, accept talking about their feelings because uh, men's mental health is not only a taboo in uh, the Middle East, it's a taboo worldwide. 
but we decided to take, uh, take off this challenge and uh, see what we can do. When we first started, we realized that so many people uh, just wanted a place, a safe place to speak uh, about their feelings and about the struggles that they're having, especially in the situation that's happening in Lebanon. And thankfully, we were able to give them a safe community with no judgments to express themselves. Okay. Honestly, was, was there some point during the campaign where you said, no, that's too much, we're going to stop it? Uh, to be very honest, no. At no point we felt that we're going to stop because uh, all the men that we encountered were so supportive. And each time we created a workshop and we spoke to them, they told us, please continue. So Excellent. thank you to Great. them. Okay. Um, the question, of course, is how do you go on with the campaign? Well, to be honest, uh, now we're planning to expand this campaign to not only a campaign about men's mental health, we would like to open up our own organization, to be honest. Wow. Uh, so people can come to us when they need support and uh, we're, we want to uh, direct them to people, to professionals that can actually support them like therapists and psychologists. So we hope that uh, we achieve this goal. Wow, that's the spirit of ELDA and, uh, and the Social Campaigning Academy. I wish you all the best. So, of course, you want to greet your sister, somebody else, your parents probably, who supported you? First and foremost, I want to greet Tala, because as much as I'm happy standing here today with you guys, as much as I'm sad that she's not standing beside me, because I could have not done this campaign without her. And definitely, I would like to thank uh, both our parents for their support in driving us around everywhere and taking us to the shoots and to the workshops and for being our number one support. Thank you so much. All right. All the thanks from us as well. Thank you. This happened with a live show, but that's okay. Yeah, so how, how do you like the action so far in our award show? I mean, I, I, I love Sabine, Christoph. I, I love the, the winners. I love um, the show, but I don't know. Something's missing, isn't it? Some action? Yeah, I don't know. Have you seen the Oscars? <laughs> I mean, like, you know, they had action, you know? But I think, as you know, I'm a boxer. I think Will Smith could have done it better, don't you think? <laughs> The slap. You mean the slap? Yeah, the slap. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, what do you think about this? No, I'm the real man in black. <laughs> Before this is getting out of order, um, we like to introduce two people. Um, without them, it wouldn't be impossible what we are doing here. Um, the, the woman and the man in the background preparing everything. And, um, well, you here in the room, you know them. On the internet, you get known to them. Let's welcome Lina and Michael. So, hello everyone. So good to see you all. Hello at home. Thank you for watching. And uh, it's our honor today to present the Audience Award. For the last days, um, you could wo vote on the internet. And actually, almost 4,000 people did. And um, I also I can reveal now what you will win. The one of you who will win the audience award, it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching with one of our great elder coaches. And you can decide on the topic and the time. And uh, Chris will do everything you want. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So it was a really close race, I have to tell you. They liked all, people like all of your campaigns. We can see it in the Facebook chat now. They are cheering for you. Um, but there can only be one winner. So, let uh, while you are opening the envelope, I'll uh, get the monkey. Oh yeah, you will of course not only get the coaching but also an award and uh, a uh, award certificate, and you will get a small monkey, of course. And the audience award of the 12 Monkeys Award goes to the campaign Green Souls by Habiba Masoud, Islam Masoud, Warda Ajour, and Ahmed Kurosh. Yes. 
Congratulations. We are so very proud of you. It's it's really a, really is a great campaign uh, with very important topic. It's about mental health for children in war zones, especially in Palestine, especially in Gaza. They had great outreach, both uh, digitally, online, and in the real world, so to say. And obviously, the uh, audience uh, saw it and thought that this topic is important. And we're very, I'm, I'm so excited. We're so pride, proud. We'll make sure you'll get this in Gaza. Thank you very much. Yes, congratulations. I know that you're watching um, and we try to get you on Zoom, but unfortunately we have to go back to our plan B and just um, have you watching us and we will see you later also. And thank you everyone at home who voted. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. And as Lina said, we don't have you here in the room, but we have you in our hearts there in Gaza. And I think we have Ahmed. Um, and Ahmed, what does it mean to you to, to help people in need? The main reason I joined the program is to be able to contribute more and to help other people. So by doing this project and getting the chance to do that, uh, it makes me feel like a better person, to be honest. And that's what I want to be, always striving to be a better person. Uh, so that yeah, that's how uh, helping others makes me feel. Thank you very much. Congratulations to the audience award. So, I guess you are all winners tonight. Yes. Okay. So, there is a special award for a special campaigner. With her campaign, read with Ninet. Ninat Abi Atalla is fostering a culture of reading in Lebanon and introducing the joy of reading. Ninat, also, you will be winning with us a special award. Welcome, Ninat. Congratulations. A 300 euros prize money. <laughs> and before we give the word, to Ninette and her wonderful campaign. Of course, we have an honorary speaker for you, and it's a special man, uh, Paul Spies, originally from Holland, now in Berlin. He's a very creative mind and visionary. You would love him from the very first moment, and maybe you meet him later on, not tonight, but later on. He's an art historian, an archeologist. Um, he's a board member and director of the uh, City Museum of Berlin, as well as the chief curator of the state of Berlin in the Humboldt Forum. And now he will honor Ninette and read with Ninette. I am here to laudate, to honor Ninette Abi Atala. She's from Lebanon, she's a psychologist, and she made an outstanding campaign under the title Read with Ninette. I am tomorrow. Therefore, I read. This outstanding campaign developed out of a fascination of hers for stories. And in her social campaign, she um, shares uh, her personal story. Um, and with that, she inspires others to become a community of readers. Now, this is a very clever thing because reading is fun. So fun is a very good way to get people to do things. And we need people to do things for social change, for a better world. So by combining her own fascination for reading with that of others and then speaking about important subjects, like she started with discussing a book on leadership um, that might help the whole world to become a little bit better. So a social campaign, but also you could say fun. And this is the combination we really appreciate it. It's, you know, getting people in a mindset, a right mindset for social change. Well, Ninette, you are tomorrow. Lots of success. Congratulations with your prize. Thank you very much. Well, are you surprised? Yes. <laughs> yes. You didn't know there's a special award, right? Didn't no, you? No. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, is there, you know, there might be some people watching on Facebook now and say, well, a lot of good campaigns, so probably I'm going to start a own campaign. What do you like to say to those people who consider to campaign themselves? Okay, uh, I want to say to them, yeah, start and take the first step. Uh, because that's how you can uh, contribute to change and that's how you can um, uh, be a model for people and show how you can be a leader from yourself. And um, w which book do you actually read? Which book do you actually read? Yes. Uh, from the books I mentioned on my page? Yeah. Um, yeah, they can start with uh, The Leader Who Had No Title. It's a good book. <laughs> and uh, there are many others, Yeah, And they can read my book that I will publish later. Oh, OK. Oh. <laughs> so good luck for that. And um, my congratulations as well. Special Thank award you. to Lynette. Read with Lynette. Thank you so much. We're still not done. Sabine, we're still not done with the wow. show. Yeah. We still have more awards? We still have more awards. Okay. <laughs> tell me more about it. <laughs> no, you tell me more about it because we have one more special award. <laughs> so one more Michael special award. will be telling us. Uh, Michael will be telling us. No, we will open it together, the three of us. Okay. Sabine. Another special prize and 300 euros prize money to the campaign that promotes social media minimalism by Madeleine Abu Ireye. <laughs> and uh, since Madeleine is not here uh, with us, uh, just wanted to show her. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Allow me now to introduce our honorary speaker, Malak Baghdadi, a wise advisor, partner, and friend of ELDA, and fundamental part of Social Campaigning School. Malak Baghdadi is an entrepreneur, co-founder, and CEO of Factory X, the first co-working space in Nablus. I also want to thank Elda. This is our second year working together and for many years to come, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> uh, back to Madeleine. Madeleine is a super talented artist with her inspiring, clever and yet risky idea. We were all wondering how could this topic work on social media. Um, this award goes to Madeleine Apuraya. She is a Palestinian young woman from Ramallah. Uh, basically because she made the impossible happen. She created an anti-social uh, media campaign on social media. Uh, her campaign is named Khutwa, and Khutwa means a step, uh, and a step by step with, uh, with more challenges, with inspiring and emotional stories, and also with education. Um, so how did she make it happen? Uh, first, she executed it really well. Uh, with a good evidence-based approach with clear focus on uh, delivering a real-world uh, change um, with a healthy also relationship with social media and reintroducing ways for people uh, to, to enjoy life basically without uh, keep looking on, on their phones. Uh, um, and also finally be because of the amazing comics that she created and she also executed a workshop uh, comics uh, drawing and she interacted with people uh, face to face and showed them how they can enjoy their time um, basically offline. Uh, unfortunately, Madeleine wasn't uh, able to come here in Amman, but she is watching us right now and we are sending you warm wishes and we really hope also to see more of her amazing work uh, in the near future and we again We'll make sure to hand you the uh, award and also the certificate. Um, we also pre-recorded an interview with Madeleine and we will be showing it now. Thank you. And um, as you said, uh, we had the opportunity to talk to Madeleine earlier this day. And we asked her, um, how does it feel to be able to help other people? 
Through social media minimalism campaign, I have been able to help people who struggled with social media addiction. And it really feels empowering to work for the people and for the social good. By Elda's help and guidance, I have been able to make a positive impact on others' lives and it's really a nice and heartwarming feeling. Thank you very much. Marlene, this applause is for you. Thank you very much. So, um, since I told you um, we are better than the Oscars, I, I don't want to stop. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I don't want to stop with the celebration more, and the more. award. One more, yeah. You want, you want one more? Yeah. One, one more, yeah. one more, yeah. one, one more, one more, one more, one more. Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's up to you. So we have one more special prize, one more special award, three hundred euro prize money, and it goes to Green Souls Palestine. Again, Varda Ajur, Habiba, Masoud, Islam Masoud, and Ahmed Kurash, Mental Health of Children in the War Zones. We've seen them before. It's a fantastic project. They were unable to come. They were waiting at the border and couldn't come in. But we have the award, and we have um, the certificate, and we have Michael Geller. <laughs> and we will make sure. Islam, Habiba, Ahmed, and Varda, that you will get the prize, and inshallah, no, not inshallah, wallah, we'll meet life. We'll meet life for sure. We'll make it happen. Uh, if you can't come to us, we will come to you. I promise. Uh, this prize goes to you, and of course not, and of course not, ladies and gentlemen, without an honorary speaker. We have one more um, honorary speaker. It's Eva Bertram. She's a, she is a digital innovator, a change agent and positive mind. She's the CEO of the foundation Jeder Mensch, each human being. She's a former head of digitalization and media competence at the Ministry for Youth, Family, Refugees and Integration in North Rhine-Westphalia. That's one of the western counties in Germany. And now we see her um, on the internet and here on the screens in Amman. It's your turn, Eva. Hello, everyone. I am talking about Green Souls Palestine, a campaign about mental health of Palestinian children living in war zones, created by Habiba Massoud, Islam Massoud, Wada Ajur from Gaza, and Ahmed Kourouch from Nablus in West Bank. They are all medical students and they created their campaign in their free time while living in a war zone themselves. So uh, I was deeply impressed when I first learned about your project. You started an Instagram page in January and shared informational posts to raise awareness and how wars affect kids' mental health. And you gave tips how to deal with traumatized children and what to do in times of crisis. And a few weeks ago, you, Wada and Habiba, visited a school and held a work workshop with children to help them handle the stress and cope with everyday problems in a psychological first aid workshop. And so with that workshop, you managed to create a great spillover from online to direct campaigning. And I am so much convinced that not only is it important to teach people in Gaza how to help traumatized children, but also to let people outside Palestina know these conditions and what children go through because of wars. Dear Wada, Abiba, Islam and Ahmed, you are just starting your journey and we can't wait to see the changes you're going to achieve. I wish you the very best and good luck for you and your families. And we had the opportunity as well to talk to Habiba today. And she want to say some, to something special, a very warm thank you. I would like to thank our lovely Ilda team for their constant support and guidance throughout the journey. Sending love from Gaza. Thank you very much. Thank you, Habiba. Thank you. Shukran, Habiba. Shukran. <laughs> Green Souls Palestine. And now we can't believe that social campaigning school has come to its end after 10 months. But um, of course, it's not the end of Elda in the Middle East. As we said, we are looking forward 
to make more campaigning schools, to make more campaigns. This is a starting point. You are the ones to carry the torch um, out there, spread the message, um, continue with your campaigns. You know, Elder is a family. We are going to stay in touch. Um, we are helping you in any way we can. And we are looking forward to see all of you here in Amman, somewhere in the region, probably sometimes in Europe. And we wish you all the best. It was such a pleasure to work with you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And it's an us to thank you, the Federal Foreign Office of Germany, all our honorary speakers, our partners, Malak Patadi, Sabine Abouad, our great team, Yassin, Ahmed, and the team, uh, Lina Dressler, <laughs> Michael Geller, Star Median, L Academy, and all viewers worldwide, and Will Smith in Los Angeles. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And now come on stage, all the students. Come on stage, confetti. Where are the confetti?